this is all things this is all things that are going to be happening throughout Jacob's trouble all right so let me continue or right, let me get this uh, real quick um that was it on that that was it on that on that Isaiah 65. This is Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 1. And it reads, and in, and in that day, talking about that day of Jacob's trouble, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. Meaning, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have sex with you. You just, you know, only let us be called by the name. I mean, hey, just, just have, keep that protection over us, man. When these women are going to be giving up that box just to be protected, man. All right, and it says to take away our approach. All right, because they these women are are going to realize that the men of the Lord. All right, the, there's going to be certain men out here that are going to be escaping this this judgment, which those men are going to be the 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 men of the Lord. Matter of fact, let me get that. All right. Man, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 32, and uh, what was it, um, verse 2, yeah, Isaiah 30, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2, it says, And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of waters, and a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So we're, the, the, and that man right there and it says in a man because it's not going to be every type of man because we read as like we read earlier um, and men shall be afraid all right the men of the lord we're not going to be afraid man we're going to be we're going to have fear of yahweh by shimei all right all right but we're going to continue and we're going to continue to 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 pray for mercy you know we're going to continue to uh, to do what is 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 required of us as far as as praying to the lord and following the spirit man you know but the, the, this man that's spoken of here in, in Isaiah 32 and 2 is talking about the men of the Lord. All right. There's going to be a protection from the wind, meaning that dis, the, meaning the judgment, the destruction that's happening throughout every, uh, throughout all the earth, man, mainly here in America. All right. And just to uh, get another scripture to back this one up as well. Let me get uh, Jeremiah. I believe it's chapter 50. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Just bear with me, Aki, and let me uh, find this real quick. Um, might have to actually look it up. I think I'm pretty sure it's in uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. Let me just make sure I'm not bypassing it. Let me just look it up. Oh, it's a lie. It's Isaiah. Isaiah 13. This is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse uh, 12. It says, I will make a man. And again, this man is talking about a man of the Lord. All right. A prophet, uh, a member of the elect. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And the golden wedge of Ophir is one of the most purest forms of gold that you can find. All right, so a man, a man of the Lord is going to be more precious than that in that day because we're going to be, we're going to have, we're going to, what we, what we have 
is is going to be worth more than gold, which what that what we have is going to be that that mark of exemption, all right, from judgment. So the, a lot of these women are going to be flocking to us. And again, like I said, I, I believe that that woman that was in that dream was was uh, one of those women that 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 came and cleaved on to me in 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 the, the that time that time of Jacob's trouble, all right. But you know that's that's what's going to be what's going to be happening. You know, it's gonna be out here. It's gonna be that bad for you, women, that you're gonna you're gonna uh, have to humble yourselves down and come look for a man of the Lord. You know, but the majority of you are gonna get put to death. All right. So going back to the Second Ezra, chapter fifteen. Let me get uh, back on this. All right. So back uh, nineteen. It says Second Ezra fifteen and nineteen, and it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. And spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for tri great tribulation. Because it's going to be, your grocery stores are not going to be open no more, man. Alright, you're going to be closed. There's not going to be, there's not going to be no food in there. Alright, the food that was in there has already been taken by a lot of the first people. And the food that you you might have gotten from the grocery store is already running low. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to go rob your neighbor. You're going to go break into his house. You might kill him and his family just to get his few cans of food that he got. That's how bad it's going to be out here for you people. And again, this is all a part of Jacob's trouble, man. You know, this is all a part of that Jacob's trouble. All right. So now let me get to uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 16. And uh, let me start at uh, verse 18. Kind of, yeah, let me start at verse 18. It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils, which what shall I do when these evils shall come? All right. And that's that's what Ezra was asking. All right. What, what, what am I going to do when all these things come? All right. Because Ezra was a man of, after was a man of the Lord and he understood the concept of reincarnation. All right. So he knew that he would be back here in those in those latter days. Matter of fact, when you read seven verse 17, a verse up, it says, what was me? What was me? Who would deliver me in those days? That goes to that goes to show you that he understood the concept of reincarnation that he would be back here in those days, man. Okay, so it said the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine. So there goes that 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 uh, that famine of the food, all right, and of the word. At that point, you're not going to be hearing the word, man. You people are going to be seeking it, but you're not going to find it. That's another part of Jacob's trouble, which it might come. I, I'm not entirely sure when that that famine of the word is going to come. But, you know, I can only, you know, it might come before Jacob's trouble kicks off, which is all a part of Jacob's trouble, really. When you think about it, the famine of the word is a part of Jacob's trouble, man. Okay. So verse 19, it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. So that's, what's, that's why these things are going to happen again, because you people are prideful, man. Going back to 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 50, many great misery shall be done to done to them that dwell on the earth who in the latter days be, because they have walked in great pride okay roughly paraphrase and it says behold famine and second Ezra 16 and 19 behold famine because that's that's going to be why a lot of you people are going to be going after your neighbors man breaking into your breaking into neighbors houses all right that's why a lot of you people are going to be trying to uh uh, uh board up your windows be looked like in in the dream that I had, there was people who kind of like peeping out the windows while they saw me walking down the the road, kind of looking at me, kind of like, oh, what's what's this nigga gonna do? Like, what's what's he doing? You know, because not many pe people aren't gonna be out out like that no more. You know, people are gonna be in hiding. You know, you ain't gonna be seeing people out on the highways and byways like you do now, man. You know, and that was something also that I noticed in the dream, man. The roads were all, you know, they they weren't taken care of. You know, there was grass growing, which is where we're, we're going to get into here too, man. You know, the, there was grass growing, grass on the sidewalks were high as hell. You know, so when you, people in that day to see somebody actually walking down the street, yeah, it's going to be like, oh shit, like, what, what's this nigga doing, man? Like, like, honey, like, go get, go get the rifle or go get the shotgun, you know? It ain't going to be like, oh, it's not going to be something so casual. All right, as, as to see somebody walking down the street, people are going to be looking at you like you're a threat, man. Because all that's going to be out on the streets is a, is a threat, man. Really, when you think about it, because who will be who are going to be the main, the majority of the people out on the highways and byways is going to be these martial law troops, 
and these uh these other little posses that join together to go uh, ravage whatever they can find, man. For the little bit of time that they have. All right, but verse 20 says, but all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. So you people ain't going to, you you still not going to, you're going to think that, oh, this is just happening because, um, because the government fucked up. You know, you're not going to, you're people, these people aren't going to think like, shit, man, all these, these things are happening because I, I was being wicked. You know, you people ain't going to be thinking, be saying that, man. You're still going to be prideful as hell thinking that you did no wrong, man. And you're going to hold on to that until you... Uh, that's why the scriptures say the same shall know it by death by pain, man. You're going to have to find out that you was wicked all, as all hell through death by pain, man. Okay? It says, verse 21, Behold, victuals, which is food, shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. And you see a lot, you, you, you people, you'll start, you know, because food is going to, food uh, is going to be so cheap. Because right now, when you think about it, all right, this, this, uh, when food actually starts to get, because um, right now, what, you have this, uh, this tensions happening in Mexico, for example, just to give you an example of what I'm trying to say. You having this tension with Mexico right now. So if Trump was to close off the border for Mexico, or like he's saying, he's been saying he wants to do, all right. For example, you're not going to be getting avocados. All right, so then the avocados that you're going to be getting, that do that they do have here, all right, or whatever that they grow or whatever they have, it, its price is going to be skyrocketing. So it ain't going to be the food ain't going to be um, so it's not going to be so easily being you're not going to be easily be able to go purchase some food because it's going to be ridiculously expensive. But right now, what people think? Oh, you. We in, we, we in good case right now. Because, well, you thinking that food is, is at a decent price. All right, it says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And right now, you got people that actually really believe that they're in good case, man. But all hell's around the corner, man. All right? And it says, And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, meaning death, famine of the food and of the word, and great confusion because you people ain't gonna know what's what why this is why this stuff is happening because you're too prideful to understand that you niggas are wicked, man. All right, verse twenty two. And many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So you see, a lot of you people are gonna be starving to death in the time of Jacob's trouble because you're not gonna have no food, man. You're gonna run out of people to kill to try to get food, man. You people are gonna actually start to resort to eating each other, man. Eating your kids. All right, verse uh, 23, and the dead shall be cast out as dung and there shall no man come and, and there shall be no man to comfort them. All right. So when you when these people start to die, you're just going to start. There's just going to be bodies laid out on the ground or uh, let's just say you're in a hiding spot in some house. You're so lucky to have a to found a spot that hasn't been raided yet. And someone in there dies of famine. You're just going to get the body and throw them outside, man. There ain't gonna be no one there to comfort that dead body like they do when you get a uh, someone dies, you know. You, you, you people make a whole memorial of it. There ain't gonna be none of that stuff no more, man. People are just gonna throw you out and keep it moving. That's how it's gonna be. All right. For the love of many shall wax cold. All right. That was another sign that Yahweh Shai gave his his men uh, of the times uh, of the end, man. Okay. It says. It says, and, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. All right? Cause, and that's what it's going to be, man. These cities are going to be cast down. I mean, it's going to be completely abandoned. All right? There's not going to be nothing left in these cities but just empty buildings, man. All right? And a few stragglers here and there, if they survive. Verse 24, there shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. All right? The tree shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grape shall ripe, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men. So all these pla all these cities, all right, all these uh these places with farms, all right, they, it, there's not gonna be no one there to pick to pick the food. So it's just gonna be all wasted away, man. All right, there's gonna be trees. Uh, the a lot of these, you know, you get a lot of these contractors that are these landscaping companies that are contracted to to trim the 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 sides of highways and roads and trees and palm trees and all that stuff there's not going to be none of that man so everything's just going to be growing crazy man 
we're on wild out here. All right. It said it says um, verse uh, twenty seven. It says so that one one man shall desire to see. An, well, let me read twenty six again. Say the gripe shall rape and who shall tread them for all places shall be desolate of men. All right. There's not going to be people in the cities like I stated earlier, man. There's not going to be people out and about like that, man. All right. It's just going to be you and wherever you're at and you're going to be people are going to be moving it, man. High telling it because you ain't going to be able to stay in one or two spots, man. All right. The men of the Lord, we're going to be OK. We're going to be OK. But you people, you're going to be you're going to be man. Hey, I can't even. Hey, you, but yeah, you deserve it. You people deserve it because you, you, you niggas are just wicked, man. You just, you wicked, all wicked is all hell and you deserve every, every single last bit of this, this judgment that's coming, man. All right. And call Allah Yah Bashim Yah Shai for that, man. All right. It said 27, so that one man shall desire, shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. So you, a lot of you people out here are going to be bugging out because you, you're going to want to see somebody else. You're going to want to hear somebody else's voice, man. All right, you're going to be bugging out like shit. You're going to be, you, a lot of you people are going to be thinking that you're the only person left on the planet Earth, man. <laughs> it's going to be that bad, you know? Verse uh, 28, for of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of rocks. Verse 29, as in an orchid of olives, upon every tree there are left three or four olives. Or when as a vineyard is gathered, there are left some cluster of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. All right. So meaning basically meaning that there's only going to be a few amount of people around the area, the general areas that you're going to be at, man. All right. These cities are these cities like Tampa out here, man. There you go. There's going to be a lot of people gone, man. People going a lot of people are going to be rounded up. And there's I, there's millions of people out here. There's like a million or so people out here in Tampa, something like that a million or so, I believe. But there's this city is going to be reduced to damn near nothing, man. A lot of you people are going to be rounded up, taken to concentration camps. And the ones of you that not, if you're not a man of the Lord, you're going to be dead, man. You're going to be dead or you're going to be gone. Hightailing is somewhere else, man. Getting ready to meet your dead, your end. All right? Because like, like, like the scripture said, you shall escape, escape, you know, escape, uh, hide, run from a bear. And then you go and you stop and you get bit on your hand by a snake, man. So you go nowhere, trying to run. Trying to run from the uh, the the what's happening here in the, in the city nearest to you, you're gonna try to run somewhere else. You're just gonna meet your end over there, man. There's no running from this judgment that the Lord is bringing. All right, but there, the point being that I'm trying to make with this is that there's only gonna be a few select people in cities, man. All right, and it says, um, verse 31, it says, even so, in those days there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. All right. All right, meaning these people are going to be searching, going up in these houses. It's going to be like two or three groups of people, you know, two or three uh, per group or so. You know, it's going to be like a, a group of three, and they're going to have guns with them, man. Going up inside these houses, searching their houses, seeing what they can find, see if they can find some water, maybe a can of refried beans or something. You know, verse thirty-two it says, "And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old." All right, and let me re start again from the top, thirty-two. Second Ezra 16 and 32, it says, And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns. And that's what, what I was speaking of earlier about in my dream, man. The roads that were covered up, that was covered over with the grass. There was grass sprouting everywhere. All right. These fields that were unattended, there wasn't they weren't getting cut. It was just overgrown grass and weeds. That's how it's gonna be out here, because there's not gonna be nobody to do all that. All right. It says, let me read it again. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel there through. Exactly, man. And that was that was basically it on that. You know, I mean, you can continue reading. All right, but that, that was basically the point that I wanted to hit on that. Now, I want to get hit another point real quick, talking about them chariots, man. All right, to further prove, to, to prove that, those chariots that I've seen in the vision are is actually something that's gonna come, man. All right, so this is Matthew chapter twenty-five and verse thirty-one. It says, "When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory." All right, so that's that's talk. When the Lord shall come in His glory, that's talking about the what the 
what the world ignorantly calls UFOs, all right, which is the chariots of the Lord, which is what the 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 Lord Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is going to be returning, right? and it said, and all the holy angels with him, and that's what I seen in the vision, man. I didn't actually see the get to the point to where I seen the 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 father ship, all right, but I seen these other the the angel ships coming, the the chariots with the sh the angels, man. It was just appearing, boop boop boop. It was like hundreds of them, man. You know. But getting uh continuing on, let me get this other one and then I'm close out on this. This is Revelation chapter one and verse seven. It says, "Behold," and this is talking about Yahweh Shai. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so am I. And just like in my dream, when I made it back to the end of that dirt road, you know, the uh, people were shouting, people were crying, all right? And at that moment when I looked up, that's when the people, when I saw the chariots coming, all right? So like it said here, behold, he cometh with clouds, because that's what that, those clouds is represented, metaphorically speaking, about the UFOs, the 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 so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of the Lord. It says, and every eye shall see them. So everyone is going to see these chariots appear. And it says, and they also, which pierced them, all right, going into that reincarnation again. And it says, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so a mine. All right, so with that, you know, Lord willing, you brothers were edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachak, Wadash, double honor to the elders, apostles of Great Millstone, and much blessing and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth who are diligently pushing out this truth and his truth and sincerity. With that, Shalom.